In this video, we're gonna take a look at two of the biggest killers to the success of your solar panel system. Solar power is not cheap, despite what those clickbait videos are trying to tell you. It pays off in the long run and has other benefits, but it's a long-term investment and takes careful planning and research to make sure that it meets all of your needs. So today I want to talk about two things that everyone underestimates that'll turn your long-term investment into an underperforming nightmare. The first thing I want to talk about are loads that run around the clock, or at least overnight. Most of these seem very small and innocent, and that's why everyone underestimates them. Even a small load, such as a fan or a humidifier that runs around the clock or while you sleep, can be a big deal. To illustrate what I'm talking about, I'm going to use an off-grid and a grid-tied example. First, let's look at an off-grid example. This roof vent fan for an RV uses 3 amps, or about 36 watts, while operating. Now if we run that around the clock in the summertime to help keep temperatures down, it'll use 864 watt hours of energy each day. Now that may not sound like a lot, but now let's look at how much solar power we need just to run that little fan. Let's say our RV is parked at Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming. During the summer, Wyoming gets about 6.8 peak sun hours per day. In other words, our solar panels will only operate anywhere near their maximum power rating for less than 7 hours per day, even though it's daylight for much longer than that. So, we need to generate 864 watt hours in only 6.8 hours. So if we divide 864 watt hours by 6.8 hours, we get 127.05 watts. Yes, you read that right. You need 127 watts of solar panels just to run a small fan around the clock. But you also need batteries to store that energy that we produce during those 6.8 hours so that the fan can still operate when the sun isn't shining. So our little innocent fan turned into a monster requiring hundreds of dollars of solar power and batteries. But that's only part of the story. We didn't even factor in real world conditions which will limit the solar power that you can produce. In reality, you'll need at least a 160 watt solar panel to pull this off. Now let's look at a grid tied scenario, which are a bit more complicated. That's because you'll receive a different amount of money for the power you generate than the power you consume from the electric company. And most people's goal for installing grid tied solar systems is to eliminate or greatly decrease their power bill. First, let's think of all the devices that run overnight in your home. You probably charge all of your portable electronics devices, maybe you run a ceiling fan or a CPAP machine, and certainly your air conditioner and refrigerator are running. Let's just take a small one like we did with the off-grid example. A typical ceiling fan in a home uses about 75 watts. Let's say we only use it while we sleep, which is from 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. or 8 hours. So the fan uses 600 watt hours or 0.6 kilowatt hours of energy. And let's say we live in Wyoming, since we already know the sun hours for Wyoming, and it is the summer, so we get 6.8 peak sun hours per day. Now this is where it gets complicated. Let's say our net energy metering program with the electric utility specifies that they'll pay us 6 cents per kilowatt hour for the excess energy we produce, but we have to pay 25 cents per kilowatt hour for the energy we consume. So at night when our fans are running, we'll accrue 15 cents of energy charges. No big deal, right? Well, here's the problem. To offset that amount of money, we need to generate 2.5 kilowatt hours during our 6.8 sun hours, which means we need over 400 watts of solar in real world conditions. So you need a solar panel the size of your bedroom door on your roof just to run that fan at night and keep your electricity bill from increasing. And that's only one load. Think of all the other loads you run in your house at night or around the clock. So the point is, whether you're grid-tied or off-grid, you have a very limited window of time to make all the power you need for the day, and all the things that you run around the clock or overnight add up to a lot more power than you think. The second killer of solar is HVAC. In other words, air conditioning and electric heating. These are by far the biggest loads in your home, which is no surprise to anyone, but for some reason people still don't understand how hard it is to run these systems on solar, at least the same way you would if you lived on grid power. And that's the distinction here. 
Listen, I'm not saying you can't run some air conditioning and electric heating on solar power. I'm saying you can't run it the same way that you do on grid power if you want to have a net zero electric bill. And I've literally never talked to someone that says they want to put solar on their roof at great expense and then turn around and greatly decrease their reliance on creature comforts. It just doesn't happen. Now, if you still aren't convinced, let me illustrate what I mean. Now, electric heating for a central air system is not as common for most people, but people do use space heaters a lot in the winter. Anyways, let's just talk about air conditioning, which applies to everyone. I don't have a lot of data for air conditioners for an entire home other than random statistics from websites. But a while back, I did some extensive testing with some window and portable air conditioners where I logged the energy usage over time. So let's use that to illustrate the point. Let's use a window air conditioner as our example. According to most HVAC experts, a properly operating air conditioner will cycle on for 15 to 20 minutes, two or three times per hour. Now to be conservative, let's just say it runs for 15 minutes at a time twice per hour. If we use more liberal numbers, it'll look even worse. So let's be kind. To make things easy, let's say we live in Wyoming again with the same net metering arrangement as our previous examples. Now it's the hours that our air conditioner's running when the sun's not shining that will hurt us. So we have 6.8 hours of peak sun, which means we have 17 hours where the air conditioner will be running where it will be drawing power from the grid. In my testing, I found that my 10,000 BTU window unit uses about 750 watts on average when it's running. So, the 8.5 hours where the air conditioner cycled on during off-peak sun hours means we'll consume about 6.4 kilowatt hours of energy from the grid. So, that energy will cost us $1.59. And again, that sounds like pocket change, right? But if we're going for zero electric bill and we only get six cents for the power we produce during a measly 6.8 hours per day, that means we have to generate 26.56 kilowatt hours of excess power with our solar panel system. And to make that much excess power, we need around 4,500 watts of solar panels in real world conditions. And that's only for one medium sized air conditioner for one single room. The average rooftop solar panel system is only around 11,000 watts in the US. But even if you bought a huge 30 kilowatt system, you still wouldn't be able to run central air and would only be able to run maybe four window air conditioners and still be able to power all of your lights and other things in your house each day. And a 30 kilowatt system is going to run you almost $100,000. You'd probably need a quarter million dollars for an average three bedroom house to have a true net zero energy bill every month reliably and be able to run your house like you did before solar. Maybe I should have just called this video net metering sucks because it isn't solar's fault that you can't have a zero energy bill after all. In conclusion, I love solar and I'm moving off grid to prove it. I know its strengths and limitations and the cold reality is you can't live your life on solar the same way you did before. At least not with the goal of no electric bill like everyone thinks and certainly not off the grid where you're the only source of power. It just takes too much money and that's out of reach for most of us. Thanks for watching this video all the way through and be sure to like it and subscribe to help me out.